welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where this fog puzzle is not the fog puzzle I am going to be doing today. Um, there's a little bit of a story behind what we're going to be doing today, because um, earlier on uh, this morning, I released um, my solve of a puzzle, this puzzle here, Crux by Jay Dyer, um, which it might be the longest Sudoku solve we've ever featured on the channel. Um, we are a bit worried about releasing it. It's two hours, 42 minutes long, um, which is a testament to two things. Firstly, the utter genius um, of Jay Dyer's brain. And secondly, the um, <laughs> the relative performance of little old my brain. Um, it is a, it's a wonderful, wonderful puzzle, but it's an incredibly, incredibly long video. And I was, I was, well, and Mark, we were both very nervous about releasing it, but we've been convinced by comments that we should and that there was an audience for it. So it is up. Do have a look at it. Do let us know. Do do let us know in the comments, either to this video or to that one, um, whether you want to see more solves of similar length. Because, I, I mean, there are a lot of very, very difficult puzzles out there. It's just, it, it's very hard for us to believe that there is really... Um, a genuine regular audience for, for sort of Lord of the Rings length solves. Anyway, because there is a two, hundred, two hour, 42 minute length video on the channel today, I said to Mark, presumably I shouldn't do a greatly long video um, for, for the normal slot, the normal 8.30 slot. And Mark has sent me a link um, uh, to try. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to paste it in. Um, and put it into the into the software raw fog of war by the peddling pianist <laughs> okay yes this might be quicker <laughs> this is uh, this is very tiny uh, the rules are quite long though um raw yeah raw fog of war by the peddling pianist is the puzzle that i'm going to be attempting in this video now i know something about the peddling pianist the peddling pianist has just had a baby well, I think, no, the, the peddling pianist's partner has just had a baby. I think I even might know the name of that partner. I think it might be Alana because I read I read out some news about this just the other day. Now, the peddling pianist's real name, I want to say Stuart. And I think I think baby Orla has been born to the peddling pianist and Alana very recently. So um, <laughs> that's brilliant that this, this has come up. I haven't read the rule. Well, should we read the rules together and then we can... We can see what we're going to be faced with. So normal Sudoku rules apply, i.e. place the digits one to four <laughs> once each in every row, column and two by two by two box. Um, some of the grid is covered by fog. Entering a correct digit will clear the fog from the surrounding cells. So this is the normal fog of war mechanic that we've been uh, enjoying so much. Actually, I've got more to say about that in a moment or two's time. Um, there is no need to guess. Yes, okay, the temptation to guess in this puzzle is going to be profound, I can imagine. Um, digits along a grey line form a palindrome, i.e. the digits along the line must read the same forwards and backwards. Okay, so we don't know where the palindrome goes. Palindromes move orthogonally and not diagonally. A digit on a palindrome shows how many times shows how many times that digit appears on that palindrome. Right, let me just read that again. A digit on a palindrome shows how many times that digit appears on that palindrome. Oh, so it's like circles. Ah, oh. <laughs> that's great. That is absolutely great. And I have no idea how we're going to solve it. But anyway, just before we do, what else do I have to tell you about today? Um, I can tell you that... Uh, Tuesday, which is which is coming around soon. There's two things happening on Tuesday this coming week. The first is that Mark and I are going to be streaming a game called The Chance of Sonar uh, at 10 p.m. UK time, and we'd love to have your company for that. And the second, which is really, really massively exciting, is that we have a brand new Kickstarter um, coming your way. And this is a Kickstarter fog of war. Hopefully you can you can see this. It's um, a sort of narrative driven, as it says there, a narrative driven Sudoku adventure. The story we have commissioned by the great Peter C. Hayward. The artwork, which you can see is amazing, is courtesy of Hayley Mooney. And the puzzles are from Sandra and Nala. And we know, well, we've enjoyed them on the channel, but we know how popular Sandra and Nala 
uh, now this fog of war puzzles are so uh, that that is what's coming Tuesday put that in your diary I think it will be a spectacular a spectacular thing um, now what else oh I want to say thank you actually to Judy and Caramella the cat down there in Johannesburg South Africa one of my favorite countries on planet Earth um, just I just wanted to say thank you for the email Judy it was lovely and it was very much extolling the virtues of this Sudoku community so well done to all of you for making Judy feel so pleased to be a part of it um, and then I want to say happy birthday to Meryl today and I know it's your birthday Meryl because your husband Olaf wrote to us and said that you have been transformed from an occasional puzzler into uh, how did he describe it a veritable Sudoku enthusiast um, and you do all the monthly sub um, Sudoku hunts over on Patreon so well done and apparently he's ensuring copious amounts of brownies will be available to celebrate your b birthday today I presume that's not um, the, like the girl guides is it that that's chocolate brownies fantastic I fully approve um, I mean they might even have icing as well if you're lucky Meryl happy birthday fantastic now let's have a look at raw fog of war raw ah raw fog of war because it's a pat right raw and war are reversed as palindromes need to be reversed so when we've built this palindrome under here just so everyone's clear the way it will work is um, I just realized it can't be just those three cells let's just um, can we draw a palindrome using the pen tool if that was the palindrome which it can't be actually because I've just noticed that this is going down here hang on I'm not doing a very good job of this let's build a palindrome that's not going to work either actually it's quite interesting already <laughs> thinking about how this palindrome might even work but let's imagine it worked like this and this was one two three two one that is a legitimate palindrome I think um, although it's it's not it's not going to work with these other rules but it does work so far as palindromic nature is concerned because you can see if we start here the palindrome reads one two three two one and if we start here it reads one two three two one so it reads the same whether you go from one end or the other and that is the nature of a palindrome um, do have a go the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual but now I get to play let's get cracking I'm going straight back to that tool to, to draw this in um, now how do we do this then so it's got to be this circles rule a digit on a palindrome shows how many times that digit appears on that palindrome So normally, with we have this, we've we've had this new innovation in 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 mainstream Sudoku, nine by nine Sudoku, which is circles, which which tell you how many circles have cir how a digit in a circle tells you how many circles have that digit in them, and this is a bit like that. It's self-referential, isn't it? So. So my first thought here right as I tried to draw that um, an extension of this palindrome I realized something which I think is probably important if I did extend the palindrome like this and stop this is broken isn't it because if I fill this in these two cells are going to be the same and that is that that is a propagatable property <laughs> in terms of this 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 puzzle there is no way that the palindrome that is eventually drawn in this grid can be an even length of palindrome because if it was an even length of palindrome it will have two central cells we can just we could see that there but it's the same if I extend it there this is length six now and it has two central cells but those two central cells have to contain the same digit and you couldn't stop them being in the same row or column of the puzzle uh, so it doesn't matter how we extend this it doesn't matter how complicated the extension gets um, that's of length eight a length eight the thermometer and length eight thermometer a length eight palindrome these two cells would be the middle 
and you can see they're always going to be in the same same row or column because the palindrome must move orthogonally from cell to cell. If we could move diagonally, we would get out of trouble, but we're expressly told that we can't. Now, right, so that means something really quite extraordinary. Uh, this is brilliant. I mean, this is just brilliant, Peddling Pianist. It, it's so simple an idea, and yet it, it leads to a whole cacophony of sort of noise in my brain as I think about this. So I think I can now do that. Because how could, if, if I extend this, this line here, now... I don't know what the order would be, but these digits have to be 1, 2, 3, and 4 in some order. And that would tell us there are four fours on this palindrome, three threes, two twos, and a one. But the numbers 4, 3, 2, and 1 add up to 10. So the length of this palindrome would be 10. And if the length of the palindrome is 10, it is even, and it cannot be even, and therefore that cannot exist. Now that tells us that the palindrome stops. Ah, I wanted to make that red because it, it's more dramatic. But, I'm not sure how, quite how what this means, but now there's a 4 on this line. Because if this line did not have a 4 on it, it would be a 1, 2, 3 triple. And 1, 2 and 3 add up to 6, and 6 is even. And that doesn't work. Yeah, yes, uh, that, that is right, isn't it? I'm just thinking about... So yes, either the palindrome... If there, if there is no 4 here... If there was no 4 on this line, it could only be 1, 2, 3. It wouldn't matter if it turned and picked up a 4. If it picks up a 4, we've established it can't work because it's of length 10. And it can't be more than of length 10 because we can't put a 5 on the line. We're only allowed to use the digits 1, 2, 3 and 4. Yeah, so the longest palindrome you can draw is a length 10 palindrome. And that cannot exist in the puzzle. The shortest th um, palindrome you could draw that definitely had three different digits on it would be a length 6 palindrome. And it, that would be if those digits were 1, 2 and 3. And that cannot exist in the puzzle. So I, I think I am right. There is a 4 in this sequence. And we have to make sure that the palindrome that we build, having put a 4 on it, is of an odd length. So now there must be a 2 on this palindrome as well. Again, because if there wasn't a 2, the length of these squares would be 1, 3, and 4. And 1, 3, and 4 add up to 8, and 8 is even again. So there's a 4 and a 2. Oh, but hang on. Hang on. Oh, hmm. I don't... Okay, the thing that's worrying me about this now is that... The length of the palindrome then is either 4 and 2 and 1, which is 7, or 4 and 2 and 3, which is 9. But either way, the thing that's worrying me is that there is, or there are, four falls on this palindrome. Which means that the palindrome has to visit all f a it has to visit all four boxes of the sudoku and b it has to visit all four all four rows and all four columns because it couldn't pick up four different digits which it must do if it doesn't do all of those things well Okay. Uh, let me just think about this. One, two, three. How on earth could it be of length seven? That feels absolutely absurd. Because it's got... Hmm. We know this cell is completely out of bounds. It's not just out of bounds in terms of 
we can't extend this up here. We can't do that because that gives us exactly the same problem. There's then a 4, 3, 2 and a 1 on this line and the line will have an even length. So you're never allowed to go into those squares. This square, this square is just simply out of bounds for this palindrome. But I've simultaneously... Whoa, hang on, I want to go to grey drawing of lines. I've got to go into this column to pick up a 4 in this column. But I've got to go into the top row of the grid. And I've got to go into box 3. Yeah, I mean, if this... Hang on. If this turns this... Oh, hang on. If this turns this way... How do we get into... Well, how do we keep this down to a length 7 palindrome? That's the first question I want to think about. If it turns left at the top... There's no way. There's just no way, because... It's got to, we've got to pick up something in this column. Let's do that. I've got to visit box three. <laughs> I've got to visit the top row. <laughs> How many cells is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's nine. That's probably it. It's probably a length nine palindrome. I don't see a way of it being a length seven palindrome. I'm not, I'm not absolutely sure. That it isn't yet but i just i can't see how on earth could you do it i don't think you get anywhere near i mean if this is an if this is the palindrome end you can't do it at all if, 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 if the palindrome stopped here because you've got to go into column four to pick up a four in column four so you'd have to go there and then you can't get out so that, so so this definitely is not an end it has to move now this could go into column four and it could go into row one, I suppose. That's probably... Well, no, that's not efficient, is it? Well, no, it might be efficient, actually. That could then be a four. Okay, but I still... if I Even if I do that, which feels very efficient, I've still got to pick up a four in box one. So this has to turn and race into box one. And it can't race in a straight line because now the four in box... If it did that, the four in column three two well we have to put a four on the palindrome in box three and that's going to be in one of those squares and this square is going to be also need to be a four so the minimum we could do would be that one two three four five six seven eight. it's nine again okay so i'm absolutely convinced that what we have to do here there's no way there's simply no way you can do this in in seven cells having to pick up four fours on the line. I mean, actually, maybe that's a more sensible way of proving it, because how could you... You have to offset the fours on a length seven line. They couldn't be adjacent, could they? Oh, that, that's quite a nice thought. So a length seven line would have to have fours in positions one, three, five, and seven. Because you could never have two fours next to each other along that line. And so it would have to wiggle. It would have to aggressively wiggle. And it, you, it, I mean, again, I can sort of picture it now wiggling round, trying to have those fours. Because it, it, basically the line would have to... The line could never have a straight segment like this. Because there has to be a four. Um, there would have to be a four... Well, actually, no, that's not strictly two. You could do that. Have a four here, a four here, a four here. But then you've still got to get a four in this box somehow and in row one, which is going to have to be up there. And you, can, you can't do it because you need a four within two of this position. So, OK, that's another way of thinking about it. But, but what we're learning is huge because we're learning this is a length, a length nine palindrome. And therefore, what are the digits on the palindrome? Well, they are 4, 3, and 2, and that square is a 1. <laughs>
<laughs> Isn't this brilliant? It's brilliant. So now, well, now what does that mean? The one is down here by Sudoku. Well, hmm. Well, yeah, we've got. To, okay, we know quite a lot now, actually, because this has gone up here. So that well clearly we've got to get into these boxes with our palindrome. We've got we've got five length of palindrome so far, so we've got to go there. So that's six. And there's there's right, and there's no I see, this is this is this is beautiful. It's such a simple puzzle in the sense of the setup, but it, the the logic underlying it's gorgeous. Okay, there's no palindrome in this domino. But we know that there must be some palindrome in box one somewhere because we've got to put a four into box one on the palindrome. So one of these two squares is a four and the palindrome must cross there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the ninth cell is here or here. But this is, sorry, the ninth cell in terms of completing the count, but that is the end of the palindrome. Because, because it's going to go 1, 2, 1 of these two is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And therefore, that square is a 4. Ah, okay, so we, and then we learn, we learn how the palindrome is moving. Look, it's going, it's, well, it's going down there. So this, oh, so 4 in box 1 is there. Which means these two squares are a 2-3 pair. Um, okay, that's great. One has to be there. It probably collapses now, doesn't it? Because it could, we can't have a one anywhere on the palindrome. So that's got to be a one. That's got to be a one. This is a two, three pair. We're going to get a three in the corner, I suspect, in this puzzle. It would be very hard not to get one. Um... This is a palindrome. I mean, you could colour this. I don't know if it's going to be necessary. This box has got two, three and four on it. Right, I see. OK, so let's actually count the digits here. We, we know this palindrome contains two twos, three threes and four fours. Well, there's definitely a two on the palindrome there, and there's definitely a two on the palindrome there. So these can't be, there can't be another two here. That would be three twos on the line. So that's got to be three, four, which is telling us that's three, that's two. That's two in the corner. Um, now, well, okay, now the palindrome. <laughs> now the palindrome four three two so from this side it goes four <laughs> three two oh bobbins <laughs> i don't get a three in the corner four four three let's just check four three two then four 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 yeah and the, this is the middle of the palindrome this square here is that is absolutely brilliant absolutely brilliant 15 hours whoa that's not been out long. Um, well, but it was absolutely fantastic. That is that's just pure and exquisite brilliance from the peddling pianist again. Was it Marty Sears who described the peddling pianist as a bit of an evil genius? That is a bit of an evil genius puzzle because, I mean, it's so absurd. <laughs> a four by four fog of war. And yet, it's absolutely brilliant, isn't it? It you know to, it, you can think through how the palindrome, how long the palindrome must be, and then from there basically plot it out. I loved that, absolutely loved it. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And if this video is too short for you, there is a much longer one available. I'll try and remember to put a link on the screen. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye for now.